But there's been so many earthquakes. I mean, we had Turkey, Morocco, Indonesia, knowing that your, that your family, sorry, <laughs> just knowing that your family won't intergen that. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well inshallah. Today I'm back with another reaction video. I previously did a video with my mum on the nine shocking facts from the Quran by the merciful servant and I really enjoyed it so I thought I'd have a, another little look on their channel and see what I could find and I came across the final signs before the world ends. Now I feel like this is going to be a really interesting video. I hope that we can both learn something inshallah and the video from their channel last time was very good so i have high hopes let's get into it inshallah after yajuj and majuj there will be swallowings of earth's swallowings large lands that will actually disappear under the earth they'll, they'll be they'll be gone either into the water or they'll be destroyed head over heels there'll only be dirt left earthquakes in the east and the west and in Jazirat al-Arab. These are massive earthquakes. The whole world will feel them. One in the east and one in the west and one in the Arabian Peninsula. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us in the hadiths, سَيَكُونُ بَعْدِي خَسْفٌ بالمشرق. After me, after the Prophet's death, there will be a swallowing of earth in somewhere in the eastern region, eastern to Medina. وَخَسْفٌ بالمغرب. And in the west of Medina, somewhere there, وَخَسْفٌ فِي جَزِيرَةِ الْعَرَبِ And there will be also a swelling of the earth in the lands of the Arab, the Arab Peninsula. So Allahu A'lam what will happen in that time. And there will be righteous people also go in these landslides. That's already a really interesting fact because as we know in the last year or so, there's been so many earthquakes. I mean, we had Turkey, Morocco, Indonesia, I'm sure I'm missing even more countries. It's absolutely devastating to see. I'd seen on social media that it's a sign of the end, so I did look into that for myself, and I did see what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to say about that. The earthquakes would be a sign that the end is near. If you like, there'll be righteous people, but that's because, listen to what the Prophet said. He said, One companion said, Ya Rasulullah, the earth will swallow the people, even if among them there are righteous people. He said, yes, if its people start to do too much immorality and indecency and all of those things. And we, we, we have that today. You can see it a lot in the eastern regions. You can see it a lot in the west. You know, homosexuality and prostitution and all those other khabath. People no longer believe in God and so on and so forth. That is so true. Nowadays, I feel like you're seen as a bit of a freak if you're dressed modestly and you're not going out inappropriately dressed and it is really really sad to see we see gay marriages are accepted now into churches take the uk for example if you look a hundred years ago everybody would be dressed modestly women would wear a scarf on their head and nowadays we're just so so far away from that it seems like whoever can wear the least amount of clothes to go out on a night out and it's winter time and it's freezing and that's just not nice. And that in itself is a form of oppression because you maybe feel pressurized into doing it because all your friends are or you want to seem cool. Then there will be smoke. Smoke will come and it will fill the whole sky. Dukhan is a type of smoke that will happen. We don't know much about it other than there will be a smoke. This is another major sign. Allah said in the Quran, <laughs> Which means wait until the day comes when the sky will be filled of clear smoke. Everybody in the world will see it. Mubin, everywhere. Meaning the smoke will cover all the people. It will cover all the people of the earth. This will be a day of torment. And this is also one of the signs of the closeness of the last hour. That was something that I wasn't aware of at all. Let me know in the comments if you knew that a lot of smoke would be one of the major signs that the world is coming to an end because 
I had never heard of that one, so that one's really interesting. Also, among the major signs before the end of the world would be, as we said last week, the rising of the sun from where it sets. The sun rising from the west. The sun rising from the west. The world, the universe is moving in very peculiar way now. And some scientists, as I said last time, say that it will reach a plateau phase. It will just stop. And when this happens, everything's reversed. So the Earth is rotating this way, and then it will be rotating the other way. And the sun will look like it's setting from the other side. A reverse situation of the universe's crunch. That day, no more repentance will be accepted by anybody, as we said. And finally, there will be something called a dab the beast. It will come out of the earth. Allah knows what it looks like. It will speak to the people that you have disobeyed your Lord. The Dabba is a beast and it is mentioned in the Bible as well. The beast and the sign of the beast is mentioned in the Bible. And the Quran mentions uh, that when the fate has been sealed, we will cause a beast to come out from the earth. This is the beast. The beast that walks the earth. A dabba in Arabic means anything that walks the earth from an animal form. So it walks the earth and it's called a beast because it doesn't have a particular human form. Nor is it known to be of any animal form that we know of. And Allah says, تُكَلِّمُ nas." In the Quran, it taught, Allah tells us that تُكَلِّمُ nas." It will speak to the people with speech that you can understand this beast. Some of the descriptions narrated is that it is a huge animal. Some say it will come out of the earth. The authentic hadith is that it will come out of the earth in three days. But what they say is the first part of it, the first third of it will come out. It will be huge like a mountain. The second part and the third part. So it's larger than a mountain, some say. Some say that it has the features of different beasts. So it's not one particular form. And it will be carrying with it the stick of Sulaiman. And it will wipe the people in two different colors. One is a dark color and one is a light color. In one hadith, which is authentic, it says that a person will be able, to, this is towards the end of the world, towards the end, a person will be able to tell who the disbeliever is from the believer just by looking at them. And Allah tells us in the Quran, تُكَلِّمُ النَّاسِ أَنَّكُمْ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ It will speak to the people that you lied about the verses of your Lord. It talks to the disbelievers saying you have lied, you have de denied them, you have disbelieved in them. Basically it's telling him that Today is this separation and there is no more repentance at that time. This is also evidence, no more repentance at that time. And it comes after the Dajjal and the rising of the sun. Allah knows best. But this is the indication of the hadith and ayat. It's a clear distinction. It tells people who, what you are, the good from the evil, and you'll be able to tell the difference between these people. And we'll speak to the people and Allah would have sent it like a messenger, but not a prophet or a messenger that we're talking about. It's like a different type of messenger. This is another sign. The world will know about this beast and it will go to everybody. It will travel the whole earth and people will hear it. At that point, the signs of the last hour have almost ended. That's it. There's no more other signs that tell us about its coming, except the signs of destruction, the signs of destruction. The rumbling and the earthquakes this these are the signs that once they happen that's it the world is is going to end and be destroyed it's going to get worse and worse until it's finally completely destroyed and vanished step by step knowledge will diminish and fade away on earth when we talk about knowledge we're talking about beneficial knowledge which allah has sent down and since that knowledge will vanish my dear brothers and sisters Everything that represents this knowledge and the sources of this knowledge will also be lost. It will be lifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So finally the Quran itself will be lifted. This is also in the hadith. Towards the end of the world, after Isa alayhi salam dies. After. 
And after Al Mahdi comes, there will come a time where people will know nothing of this deen. And there is also an authentic hadith of Prophet ﷺ. Ibn Abbas tells this hadith on the Prophet's tongue after the Prophet's death. And he said, When their people will have no knowledge except one word, they will remember it. They learnt it from father, from grandfather. What is that word? La ilaha illallah. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And the companion to whom Ibn Abbas is speaking to, the Tabi, he said, What is this going to benefit them? What is this going to benefit them? Is that all they know? He said, it will save them from the fire. It will save them from the fire. Ibn Abbas says this. And there's no more other knowledge except that. And these final people will live. The majority of these people will be like that. The Prophet wasallam said also, he said, Medina will remain inhabited during the days of the Dajjal. And during the time of Isa alayhi salam, son of Mary, Ibn Maryam, until he dies and is buried there. Yani Isa alayhi salam will be buried in Medina. Then it will be destroyed. Medina will be destroyed. Kharab al Medina. You'll find this hadith in Muslim and also in Ahmad, Sunan Ahmad. It's authentic hadiths. And the destruction of Medina, as our ulama say, it is not because the people will actually break it. It's not physical destruction. But destruction, Kharab al Medina, means the knowledge and the religion in there, there will be no longer people representing it in there. They'll either die or would have left. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, I heard the Prophet وسلم, say, a rider will go around Medina and say, there used to be many Muslims here. It will become history. This is in Sunan Ahmad. At the end of time, towards that era, the Prophet وسلم, tells us about a very strange man who will rule the earth an Abyssinian king will rule the earth. His name, as the Prophet ﷺ describes him, it's a name and a description. means the man of the peculiar looking shins. They're thin and they're short. He will come from Abyssinia, Al Habasha, Ethiopia. And he will destroy the Kaaba, not the Medina, the Kaaba itself, the holiest symbol of the Muslims today. He will destroy the Kaaba in order to steal its treasure and clothe covering. What I understand from that is the covering they have on it today. The Kaaba is the ancient building which was built by Ibrahim alayhi salam and whose foundations were laid by Adam. This is the hadith of the Prophet. I'm finding this so sad actually. And the fact that Medina will be destroyed, the Kaaba will be destroyed. This is the first time that I'm hearing this. I'd heard of quite a few of the smaller signs and then like the larger signs that the end of the world would be coming, but I'd never heard of quite a few of these. I just think it's so sad to think about that happening one day. You know, going to Mecca is all of our dreams as Muslims and to be able to see the Kaaba one day, inshallah, I hope we're all able to see it one day, inshallah. Finding it actually really quite difficult to watch. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that it is reported from Kaab al Ahbar that this Suwaiqatayn will first emerge at the end of Isa alayhi salam's time. Allah will send Isa alayhi salam at the head of a vanguard of between seven and eight hundred. While they are marching towards the Suwaiqatayn, and there's a special army of about 500, 800 special, which Isa alayhi salam will take with him to fight the Suwaiqatayn, Allah will send a breeze from the direction of Yemen, which will take the soul of every believer. Only the worst of people will be left, and they will begin to live like animals or copulate like animals. Ka'bah the Lan who said, at that time, the hour will be close at hand. 
Now that we know this, the Suwaiqatayn will come and grab the Kaaba break it brick by brick and no one will be able to stop him. No one will stop him because there'll be no one to stop him. Either he'll be so powerful, but Allahu A'lam about that. But what the hadiths indicate is that there will be no believers on that time. When that happens, my dear brothers and sisters, and the Kaaba is destroyed, therefore no believers. Muwahid. You heard the hadith earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the breeze before the Muslims reach the Suwaiqatayn. And every believer, in another hadith, Prophet said, every believer, Muwahid, who is a monotheist, believes in only one God and doesn't make any shirk, will die. Will die peacefully from this breeze. And only the disbelievers and the tyrants and the criminals will stay on earth. The Kaaba is destroyed. The symbols of Islam are destroyed. The Quran has been lifted. There is no more Islamic knowledge. What's left? A dunya. The world. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, A dunya mal'una. The dunya is cursed. Mal'unun ma fiha. Everything in it is cursed. Illa dhikrullahi wa ma wala. Except for the remembrance of Allah and whoever are the allies of the remembrance of Allah. So the beasts and creatures are allies of the remembrance of Allah. Because Allah says in the Quran, there isn't anything on earth other than the humans and jinns, except that it glorifies in the name of Allah, but you cannot understand their praise. And in other verses in the Quran, Allah talks about mountains and trees and all that that glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point is, Allahu A'lam, what will happen to the animals? Will they die before the end of time? Allah knows best. But the point is, everything on earth is cursed that does not follow the allegiance of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the final sign before the day of, of, of destruction is the fire. And now, Rasul sallallahu tells us, you find this hadith in Sahih Muslim, you find it in Bukhari, you find it in almost all the books of hadith, six books, major books of hadith. A fire will come out. From where exactly, we don't know, but it comes from towards uh, the uh, the northern part of the of the world, and it will spread through the world. Could be acid, could be something from the earth, volcanic eruptions. Only Allah knows exactly. The point is, it burns, and the people of the world will run away from that fire because it will take over their homes and lands. It's no longer livable. You can't live there anymore. Is it a meteorite that will hit the earth? Allahu a'lam. Only Allah knows exactly. The point is it's now. And it will gather the people. Rasul said, it will gather the people to their gathering. Mahsharihim. Some scholars say this means that it will gather them to the place where they will be resurrected on a day of judgment. That's the place on earth. Some other scholars say, no, it will gather them together in a place, in one place. And that's where the world will end and they'll all die there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Then the first moments of the destruction of the world begins. I feel like watching these types of videos is so important because it really makes you think deeper and gets you out of that rut of your own little world, your own little life and you realise that there's so much more than that. It actually made me feel really sad watching that thinking that the world will come to an end one day and I know that it will. And the thought of Medina being taken over, the Kaaba being destroyed, it honestly, it makes me feel sad, it does. But I know it's all within Allah's plan, Allah knows best. The hardest thing about being a reaver is coming from a family that don't believe. I think that's the hardest part. Just knowing that your, that your family, sorry, <laughs> just knowing that your family won't into Jannah is something that's really really difficult as a revert. I really hope inshallah one day my mom can accept Islam before it's too late. I hope that Allah can soften the hearts of all my family. My grandmother actually passed away last year during Ramadan. She was a devout Christian. She was you know, proper old school. She was such a lovely lady. She lived strictly by Christianity, by old school Christianity, not the watered down Christianity that you see today. She'd never met any Muslims. You know, her time was way before any kind of like social media or anything like that. 
So, inshallah, she's in Jenna right now. I really pray. Allahu alam. I didn't think I was going to get emotional in this video. <laughs> I learned quite a lot from watching that video, like the smoke coming down. I didn't know that. The Kaaba and Medina and about the fire at the end as well. I didn't realise it would just be disbelievers that were left. I definitely feel a lot more grounded after watching that video. I hope that you were also able to learn something from that video, inshallah, and just know that all Muslims, all reverts, whoever you are, you're all blessed by Allah. He either guided you towards Islam or he chose you to be born into a Muslim family. So make sure you do your best by him and do your best to be a good Muslim, inshallah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, give me a comment and I will see you in the next video, inshallah.